to Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Tank Rodriguez Show. I am indeed your host, Tank Rodriguez. I have a very, very special guest with me today. Uh, one of my closest friends, best friends that I've known freaking forever since I was pretty much a kid. I was 19 years old, and now I'm 33 years old. We're still friends. Uh, he's, he's starting his own podcast very down uh, in the near future and uh, decided that it would be a great idea for him to come on for us to catch up and talk some shit with each other. Uh, Frank Corona, how you doing, Frank? What up, little mama? <laughs> Deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah just uh, pulling the I'm curtain. Trying to, what? I'm trying to build a thirst trap over here. So. <laughs> I don't know if I use that right, but I, I read do, it the Do other you day, have so your, your Instagram handle on your car? Oh, uh, I will be now that you mentioned. I, what, I do you, know what do you what do you what do you drive now? Uh, I have a Tacoma, man. Really? I, I, uh, yeah, well, I okay. always wanted that uh, Back to the Future truck. Yeah, and this was the closest I could come to it. Yeah, but uh, well, it was a, it was a Toyota, right? Like the in Back to the Future. Yeah, the, yeah, it was the, a, uh, like a uh, T one thousand or something. Uh, yeah, the single cab. Those are nice, dude. Yeah, that one and then the like the like the nineties Ford F one fifty. Have you seen that movie Walking Tall with the Rock? Mm-hmm. That one. Like that one's a sweet one and like the nineties like Chevy Chevy uh, pickup trucks. Those have always been the cool ones for me. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. But anyway, Frank, how did we meet? Uh man, this was uh that was that was another question I was gonna ask you too, man. So uh, I met you when when you started working at that help desk. That yeah, we CGI. At. Yeah, yeah. Back in like uh, two thousand seven. Was it oh seven? Mm-hmm. I thought was, I was gonna say oh six, oh seven. Wow. Well, um, I know you in oh six probably were in Montreal training there. Ah, uh, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I started in February of oh seven, so you probably started okay. in oh six. Did did I interview you to come in? No, you did not. Sean did. Uh, and that dude, oh, I mean, Sean. like, I love Sean to death, and I know, like, we're not friends anymore because you blocked me on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> you know why he blocked? Well, first of all, he blocked me because uh, I wouldn't vote Democrat, which I didn't. I'm not going to get too political, but I did. You well, don't vote anyway. Shut up. The, what, right. <laughs> no, I did, but it was for the it was for the Texas governor, and he was mad that I wasn't voting for 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 uh, Beto, but I wasn't voting for Ted Cruz either, and uh, he was like, "You're you're wasting your vote, blah blah blah," <laughs> and so I sent him like just I like I was like, "Hey, if you think I'm wasting my vote, just watch this clip and let me know if it changes your mind." And it was a Joe Rogan clip, and it immediately Joe Rogan blocked. Like he literally oh. said that. Like this, those are the three last words he said to me. And I was like, whatever. But no, yeah. So in in the interview, mind you, it's 2007. He goes, "How do you find the IP address for Windows 95?" What? And I was like, "What? Why?" What? <laughs> that sounds like such a Sean question. Yeah, too. it was. I was wow, like, man. "No idea, man. Like, what the fuck? Why do I need to know that?" Uh, Did when, he find you like in a parking lot? Hey, you with the hair. Uh, do you do you know what a computer is? Do you want a, <laughs> you want a job? <laughs> <laughs> no, I I know I left. Um, I mean, not that it matters to anybody listening, but I left USAA to go to that that place, and it was the the best decision I ever made because I, I I made a great friend, a uh, long life friend, you know. Um, oh, man. Yeah. So no, no, you didn't interview me, um, but. I think you were really, really hard on me, like when I first started. <laughs> like you're like, what do you know? Oh yeah, that's cool. Do you know this? Do you know that? <laughs> that doesn't sound. No, like it, no, it happening. wasn't. Yeah. Ah, uh, uh, but just to, just for but just for context, the the place that we worked at was a help desk, meaning we you know we well personally for me, I took phone calls and helped like helped people with computer related issues. And if I couldn't fix them, I would create a ticket. That's pretty self-explanatory what I did. I mean, it's um, a help desk. It's a help desk, right? If anybody's ever watched TV, that's what they see. <laughs> like the IT crowd. That's pretty much what it is. <laughs> if you've ever been to Best Buy and had to work with the Geek Squad, uh, that's what they do. Just on the hey, phone. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Just <laughs> What's that? You forgot your password? Ah, oh, you're fucked. <laughs> that's, what, that's pretty much all we did. <laughs> and you know, it, it was so sketchy, too, because, I mean, granted, that, that it's not here in San Antonio anymore, I don't think. Um, but I remember just being able, like, some of the projects that we had, like, people would call in. And if they needed a password reset, they just gave us their name, and that's all we did. Like, yeah. you know, I was like, oh, uh, CEO wants this password reset? Got it. Like, we don't need any yeah. verification for that. I'll go and reset <laughs> that for you. Here's your NT password reset there, bud. <laughs> Let's go and uh, yeah. yeah. It was yeah, crazy. It was crazy, man. It was a wild west you know, back in this. And, like, and mind you, I'm still in a call center environment in my, you know, my regular job. Like the things that you and fr- you and you know our friend Jack would say, like especially Jack. Jack was like super dickish to me, like when we, when I first started. Like, but that's how like I think that's how he like, and I know it's weird for a call center, but that's how he like weeded people out. As oh, far yeah. you know what I mean, like he's like either oh, yeah. you can either take this or or you don't, and like he would be like, I would go up to him, and, and I'm sorry if nobody really understands what we're saying, but it, this is pretty funny. Um, <laughs> yeah. I would go to him like, hey, man, I got this issue here. He goes, what's the ticket number? I was like, oh, I don't have a ticket number. Okay, talk to me when you have a ticket number. I was oh, like, my God, flashbacks, man. <laughs> dude, that is Jack. Jack W. That's how he tested people's salt, though, man. And I think that's probably just like a generational thing. Because that dude, like, once you once you got to know him. Oh, man, he was the best. His, his, uh, his little salt test that he had for you, or his litmus test, I guess, if you will. Um, he was like a genuine dude that yeah. wanted to help you out. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, balls to bone. That guy was like, he was down to help you out, whatever. Yeah. Call him at three o'clock in the afternoon and he was able to get his truck from his wife. He'll go help you move. Yeah. Like yeah. that's how down that guy was. He was a good guy. He was an older guy, but he was, a, he was a really good guy. And he, he's still alive. <laughs> Well, and I say what? I don't. I'm just just making sure that you know he's still alive. (laughs) Jack was a great guy. I'm I'm, I'm right here, you prick. (laughs) I helped write his eulogy. (laughs) Well, whatever. No, but I mean, honestly, like I, but I mean, what I was what I was getting at too, like he wouldn't help you unless you already helped yourself, like. Like the whole point was to, you know, to do everything you can before you talk to me. But now, like nowadays, like if someone asks you for help and you don't help them, like you get in trouble. Like, it's like, why didn't you assist this person? And I was like, what the fuck? Like they didn't assist themselves. That's what it was. And I think that's why, like, I really was excited to have you on too, because you really pushed me to learn how to think. And I know that's a weird thing to say, like, but I ask myself and I ask other people sometimes, like, do you really know how to think? I mean, I know we think of things and I know we think of uh, what to eat, you know, what to wear. Uh, but really, it comes down to do you know how to think like w- this issue? That's a, I mean, it doesn't have to be call center related. It, it's real life related all the time, too. You know, you're, you're, you're given these these obstacles in life. And the first thing you want to do is grab for help and reach out for help rather than help yourself. That was really like the, the the biggest thing, and I and I told you too, like when we talked on the phone the other day, um, I tell this story a lot, like how I learned computers it was just like, uh, and I, I still actually use this too, um, like when everyone, like when anyone asks me, like, hey, uh, uh, how did you how did you figure that out? Like, how did you learn? You know, how did you learn this? Or uh, where did you find that answer? I was like, I got a suit. Like, this is the one thing. This is what you told me, man. <laughs> He goes, I got, I got this, uh, I got this website, man. It's super secret. Like not a lot of people know about it. Uh, but I'll, I'll go, you know what? I'll go and tell you, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Uh, he goes, yeah. and, and you would go, uh, write it down, but look, don't share it with nobody. I'm just giving it to you. <laughs> All right. You ready to write it down? G O O G L E. What the fuck? Google. Like, <laughs> And I'm like, yeah. And then you were like, yeah, dude, like, like fake it till you make it. Like, like, oh, like, man. what do you, why aren't you using the resources called the fucking internet to look for your fucking answer before you reach out? You know what I mean? Like, why are you giving up so quick? Um, and I don't know. I mean, like, I, I know you've had a, a really different career path than me. 
Um, but did you see? Do you still see that, or did you see that still along the way? Oh, absolutely, man. This, you know, that's the 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 easy road is always to um, ask for help. And you know, I I don't want to discourage anybody from asking for help because there are some times that where you're brand new to something and you just have to. Yeah. Like you don't know how to research because that's not something they teach anymore. Right. Um. You know, I I've always been like a. a kind of get dirt under your fingernails to figure things out kind of guy. Right. And there's a lot of people out there, but at the same time, like people are afraid to fail. And yeah. I love to fail every now and then. Cause that means that I'm doing something. And I tell people now, you know, if you're not failing every now and then you're not doing shit. Yep. You, you're not, if you're not fucking up at least once a week, you're not doing anything. And some people were like, what, what are you talking about? Um, and it's true, man. If you really sit down and think about it, if you haven't failed at anything recently, you haven't done anything at all. Yeah. Um, hundred percent. And, and that's, that's, you know, kind of the, the fake it till you make it thing. Right. Yeah. If you, if you believe it, if you believe in it enough yourself, the people around you will start to believe in it. Absolutely. Too, and so, and that's not some secret, like the, like the book, the secret bullshit to where like, if you just believe it, it will become into an existence. Like, no, I believe I can do this. I'm going to work towards it. Uh, but Frank actually had this motherfucking phrase on his desk, like fake it till you make it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Shit, man. Look at you still using it. Hell, yeah, I yeah, dude. It time to time too, man. So and, it's, and, it's good. and mind you, I mean, like, and I don't want to like, you know, dive too much in, in, into like your work life, but I mean, you, you don't have a degree. Right. Like, you know, you don't have a degree uh, like and I've saw like the 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 again, like I was telling you, like I, I got to see the inception of like I think it's weird, like people get stuck in this call center environment like myself, you know, and they just stay around that circle, you know, of, of call center. Um, but I actually saw you got to leave that bubble uh, like when you for, when you first got promoted at CGI and to know where you're at now. And it's just like, it's incredible, you know, like you put in the work, like you didn't have, you didn't, you didn't have, you didn't make like not going to college, like an, an excuse, you know? And like, now you're like, I mean, you could probably run CGI like back in the day now with oh, it. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, this it's, it's all in, um, how you want to how you want to do things because we, we spend a lot of time trying to blame others for what's going on with us mm -hmm. but at the end of the day man you you go to sleep with the thoughts in your head you wake up with the thoughts in your head there's nobody to blame but you yeah there are certain situational issues that you just can't get around yeah. you know um but ultimately you know if you tell yourself hey i need to get up and i need to do this you're going to be the one that makes it happen yeah. or not. And yeah. that was my thing when I was at CGI. I was like, yo, um, I was I was pretty new to the game as far as computing goes. But, like, if I wanted to figure something out, I will figure it out. Like, it, there was not much that was going to stop me from trying to figure things out. You yeah. know, if I had to read a book, if I had to go on the Internet, thank God for the Internet, man. Mm -hmm. There's, like, tons of information now. But, um you know, you just, I mean, if you're going to figure it out, you're going to figure it out. Absolutely. That, that's just it. I mean, I remember doing some crazy shit with you. I mean, uh, I think the, the, the weirdest thing that I ever done, I mean, cause it was kind of out the door already was we got to punch telephone, uh, mm. holes. Uh, <laughs> hell yeah, man. Like that, that was the most tedious, tedious thing I've ever done up until that, like up until now, like, that shit sucked. Like learning where all the fucking wires were at. But anyway, uh, yeah. Yeah, what was it called? Punching numbers or whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, punching the. It was like a one ten and the sixty six block, oh, uh, punching the wires on those things. But yeah, dude. I mean, that that was the other thing too. Like I think what helped me move up was learning how to. Um, and I say pretend because I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but <laughs> learning how to read people and learning how to read social situations, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a part of the whole fake it till you make it thing, right? Yeah. If you're if you're paying attention to people's body language, you're paying attention to people's facial expressions, you kind of know when you've said something wrong or you know when you say something right, you kind of ride that wave mm -hmm. for a minute. 
and I think that's what I did, right? I got in good with um, uh, Greg, who was our network engineer that was in, stationed in Dallas at the time. Mm-hmm. Every time that guy showed up, because um, I, I met him when we started up the help desk, because I was like one of the original five that yeah. went to go to um, Canada and like bring back the information. But he was there at, at Go Live. And like I got to talk to him, you know, I was telling him, uh, you know, what I did and what I was trying to do. And he's like, all right, cool. You know, he's like, if you're really interested in networking at the time, that's what I, that's where I wanted to go. He's like, check out this book, man. It's this uh, Network Plus. And he's like, if you can pass that test, man, you 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 might have a chance at at uh, becoming a network engineer one day. I was like, fuck yeah, dude, I'm gonna get on that. Yeah. And so I got my A plus. I started studying for my net plus. And I don't know if you remember a couple of those times, man, where I started like study groups at the office because I didn't have any kids at the time. Yeah. I was like, hey, man, if you want to study, I'm gonna be here because. You know, we had this big ass office with the big conference room. Nobody was going to bug you. Um, you could go in there and do that. But I, I befriended the guy. I was like, yo, you know, and every time he came down, I would pick his brain. Hey, how do you do this? What is, you know, what is a VLAN? I didn't know what the hell a VLAN was at the time. I just, hey, plug the computer in the wall. That bitch is going to the <laughs> internet. That's all I knew. Uh, and, you know, he, he kind of taught me how to, you know, how things work, what VLANs were, how things actually go out to the Internet, stuff like that. It doesn't just happen. It's not like a magic jack that you stick in the wall and shit just yeah. appears. Like, um, hey, you know. Real quick. I mean, I, I know this is kind of going into more of a tech <laughs> tech pod, um, but do you still recommend people get in their A+. Plus? Absolutely. I think really? A plus is like if you are brand new to anything computers and you have your A plus, that is the foundation. That is the bedrock before you put the concrete on the foundation for your house. Cause that's gonna tell you about motherboards, that's gonna tell you about RAM, that's gonna tell you how to plug that bitch in. I mean, it it, it really does go into the nitty gritty. I know it's changed a lot since right. since I took mine. 13 14 years ago <laughs> now they're probably teaching you how to change a usb port on a printer or something who knows yeah. but absolutely man uh a plus is where it's at because that's gonna if you don't have a if a solid foundation then you're just gonna be you know guessing and doing you know crazy shit which is okay if you don't want to sound like you know what you're talking about yeah. but if you got that a plus you know when somebody says you know, uh, freaking PRAM or the difference between an RJ45 and an RJ11. Right. You will know visually, all right, this one has this many wires, that one has that many wires, and you'll be able to take off from there. Hell yeah. Well, that's cool, man. Yeah, no, I just, like, a lot of the, like, techs that I talk to, like, yeah, we don't really recommend, like, it's like if they don't take A plus too seriously, like, when they're, you know, going over resumes. And I'm not sure if that's just a San Antonio thing or, you know, um, but that, that's just the, the, the conversations that I've had with other techs. Like that, well, that's, and, that's the crazy thing, man, is like, cause I, I get to interview people mm-hmm. and the minute they have a plus or network plus and they can hold their own in a conversation. Like I will ask, what are the pairs in RJ 45, you know, and if they can tell me, or if, if they can, if they know what I'm talking about. You know, because not everybody remembers that shit off the top of their head because right. it's tough. Yeah. But if you can say, oh, yeah, I remember that chapter from this book. And, you know, I know there's orange and white and blue and white and all that. I'm like, all right, we can go from there because, mm-hmm. you know, you've at least tried to study and you know what's what it's about. Yeah. As opposed to some dude w- or, or some chick with a college degree that, you know, they went to school, they did the paperwork, they studied. That's fantastic. But can you put that stuff into practice? Because right. with the A plus, you I mean, you have to touch some of that stuff, right? You yeah. can't just it, it can't be all theoretical. Right. You really have to put your hands on that stuff. Um, and so I mean, if you got a college degree and you have certifications, you should be virtually unstoppable. Like the only thing that's stopping you is someone giving you a chance. Um, with, with those two things, when you go to an interview, 
Like it is just that that should be cake, right? If mm -hmm. you just have like real bad nerves or if you don't like looking people in the face when you talk, then maybe that's that'll be your your downfall, <laughs> but if you have your degree and you legitimately studied for your certifications, then you should be golden. Well, that's cool. I appreciate that. I mean, that's um, that's good insight, especially for someone like you who actually, who actually hires people. Um, and it, yeah, but uh, you did mention like as far as like reading people, and I it was a gr dude. It was so fucking funny. Like the, we were talking the other night uh, about. Because I was like, oh, you know, you want to just you want to discern how to how to read people. And I was like, oh, I got I got just a thing for you. And it's actually <laughs> a really, really crazy story. Uh, so when we worked at CGI, I normally worked. And mind you, like this is a help desk. And I was the only motherfucker there from like like 2.30 to 10.30. Well, probably from like 5.30 to 10.30, I was the only person there. Right, and it was not because he was being a nice guy. There was differential pay, so he was trying to stack that money. <laughs> there wasn't back then, dude. <laughs> Ooh, there, there was, was not. I worked the graveyard. Well, the yeah. graveyard had it. That was the only thing that had it. Was a graveyard, and not even the weekend. No, only the graveyard had it. Yeah, yeah. I think it was just the graveyard. Yeah, the which time. I ended up doing. Oh man, I got some stories from that one too. <laughs> Good lord, uh, there was actually one. Oh, I love her to death. She's still a friend of mine. But you know, we were young. Uh, there was one girl, uh, <laughs> the morning shift got there and she was passed out with a fucking beer in, her <laughs> in the trash ooh, can. Ooh, <laughs> you have to tell me who that was. Yeah, I'll tell you. I have a couple of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, God damn it. Like, like, like we had so like, like we had it made in, in the night shift or even the weekend shift too was cool. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, so I worked there and, you know, call volume was really low. So there was, you know, the only thing I really could do at the time before I, like, I real you know, I, I realized that I should be doing more with my life other than just going to work. Uh, you know, there was just my space and Facebook was barely starting up and that got boring really quick. And so there was this, uh, there was this, um, bookshelf near our boss's desk. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll pick out a book. And I saw this book called Blink, right? And it's actually uh, 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 Malcolm Gladwell. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yep. and, um, and it talks about how, like, to be able to, like, discern people or uh, to see if people are telling the truth or not, like, within the first 15 to 30 seconds of meeting them and hearing their, what, they're, what yeah. they're saying. And so, yeah. uh, so and, and that was a book that I, that I, to this day, that I recommend, uh, you know, in, in certain situations for people to read. Um, and then, so you were telling me, uh, about how you wanted to, um, you know, uh, maybe like, cause you're, you're talking to different people, you know, uh, in, in higher positions and, you know, and how to read them better. And I was like, Hey, you know what, man, there's this fucking book you should read. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I go, it's called blink. And Frank goes, uh, guess who put that fucking book there, man? <laughs> yeah, man. And uh, at the time, you know, I was, I was trying to find myself. I was trying to find, you know, what, what made me tick, how to be a better person, things like that. I'm still on that journey now, but, yeah. um, one of the, one of my big things when I became the, um, like the tech lead in our cubicle, cause you were in my cubicle group, right? Yeah. Um, what I wanted to do was like have a small library of books that, or like self-help books or certification books or, or something like that. And, and Deborah, um, which was our, she was our director. Uh, she had her own office and everything right there outside of our cubicle area. I asked her one day, I was like, Hey, you know, I have this idea. Um, she was like, mm, how much do you need? I was like, I don't know. Give me, give me 200 bucks. And she's like, Ooh, put the she put the brakes on that she's like hold on she's like i'll give you a hundred bucks and i was like i'll take it so i went to like barnes and noble and i picked up you know a couple of books and she had this uh bookshelf in her office i was like i'm gonna move this out here she's like okay she's like i don't think anything anybody's gonna pick any of those books up but we'll see. And she was like, what are you going to do if somebody steals a book? And I was like, well, I mean, 
who's gonna steal a book right I mean, <clears throat> let alone any, <laughs> let alone anybody picking them up it's which which isn't a bad person. thing if you steal right. i mean that's pretty no, pretty fucking gnarly absolutely not yeah you know if if they take if they take a book as long as they read the damn thing i'm right. fine with that um and that was kind of my way of passively um spreading the idea of self-improvement mm. i didn't know that that's what i was trying to do but that's what i was doing for myself so in a way i was helping myself by buying those books because i bought the books that i wanted right <laughs> and um i don't know if you remember matt um matt tucker uh, yeah, yeah yeah so one of the books that he recommended for me actually like started this whole thing it was called um how to make friends and influence people yeah dude and i was like what you know i i, I read through it and you know he was my roommate when he lived there that's in, right yeah uh, san antonio and i would ask him questions about it but really man that was the that was the launch pad for my journey that I'm still on, man, it, it was great. It was such a great book and it led to other books, but you know, it, it, it was, uh, it was selfish <laughs> for me to want to buy those books, but I put them out there for yeah. everybody to read them. And, and it, you know, it fantastic story that you actually picked that book up, read it and, and, you know, took something away from it and still recommend it. And, one of my favorite stories from that book was the doctor story. When you walk in to visit a doctor and they constantly talk over you, it, in the book, of course, I'm not a professional. I don't know what, whatever, but it, it says that, that doctor's not going to hear everything you have to say. So, like, let's say that you have, you know, some stomach issues or you got some issues with your back and that doctor doesn't let you get any words in. They're not going to try to help you. They're just kind of there to diagnose you quickly and move on, right? right. But a doctor that will listen to you is is more likely to like look into it, right? Uh, let me write that down and let me research that for you and see what else we can find. Or, you know, it is maybe a little more likely to actually want to solve what you have going on. Once again, not a doctor. I'm not a psychologist, but that's what it said in that book. Well, I'll, I'll say this, and this is kind of like, uh, you know, real world <laughs> shit. Uh, so like last week I went to the hospital and I thought I was having, I like legitimately thought I was having a heart attack, man. And yeah, so I was like, I went in and they're like, um, here, like you're, you're not having a heart attack, EKG, blood works fine. But it was like, they didn't listen to what I was saying. It's like, hey, look, I'm having this, like this, like it's like pinching in my heart or like pressure. And uh, they're like, yeah, no, you're fine. Like, and they didn't, they, but they weren't figuring out why I was feeling that way. Last yeah. night I'm on my way home. And I have that same feeling. And last night I was in the, I was actually in the ER. Uh, oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> and I'm here, bitch. No, um. Damn, you're all laughing. <laughs> no, I mean, died yesterday. I almost <laughs> died, motherfucker. Nobody can kill me. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, I was there, but it was weird because, and, and, and it's funny that you say, I forgot about that story. Um, but I, I, I get there and the doctor, like, you know how the doctor goes in there. He's kind of standing up and not really looking at you. The doctor yeah. comes into my room, sits down, right? And just like, he's like chilling. He's not sitting up straight. He has his back slanted. And he goes, when was the last time you did this? What was the last time you did this? Is it more like this or like this? Is it this? I mean, he was just asking me 20 questions, like getting it down. He goes, yeah. if you get in, and, and finally, and he's like, it's fucking funny though. Cause it's not a heart attack at, at all. He goes, your EKGs came fine. Uh, your blood works fine. Uh, it's probably just something something with your gastric. Like, <laughs> I was just about to say, you probably got gas. Because that shit happens to me too, man. Yeah, it was scary, dude. It was, f yeah, I mean, like, I was yeah. getting, like, lightheaded. I couldn't breathe. And, like, I was I was actually, like, getting, like, a, like I had a strong pain in my chest. They gave me, uh, like, a lidocaine. I forgot. I'm not a doctor. I don't know gas the name. Gas and shit. Yeah, right? Dude, like, <laughs> like, in two hours, I was like. God damn it. Like, like what the fuck? Like, and then, he, but you think about it. Why couldn't that first doctor do that? You know what I mean? Like, 
in essence, excuse me, that's that's definitely why I went to another doctor. Well, that and I thought it was dying, but it's crazy. But I mean, that, you're right. It, that story is totally right. Like you got to like peel back the onion, like find out oh, what's yeah. really, yeah, you know what I mean? Like find mm-hmm. out what's really going on. Um, and I, I, I do that for work. And, um, and, it, and it's like, I, I think the, the great example is um, if you're stuck on an island, what three things are you bringing? You know, and, but it's like, well, and then, you know, people will just shout, shout out uh, fire, you know, uh, or matches, uh, you know, a knife, rope. And I'm like, oh, OK, well, if you would have asked, I would have told you, like, there's an unlimited m- amount of, of matches, you know, like, and it's like I was just about to say matches run out, bitch. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and it, but it's like you don't know what, what island you're going to unless you find, you know, you're asking these questions yeah. of what to bring. Yeah, exactly. uh, but yeah, no. What so would you. All right. Scenario go you're you're stuck on let's say uh what's that movie with tom hanks where he's fucking stranded on castaway castaway there you go if if you found yourself you woke up on an island what what three things would you want to have okay um is there is there food on that island that i can eat bitch i just gave you the title of the movie you've seen the movie oh so we're going off a castaway itself Okay. Yeah, okay, I thought we were, I thought we were doing like the ask questions exercise on that island. What would I bring? Um, probably uh, okay, a big machete. Right. Uh, damn, I'm just trying to think about Castaway now, because I, I I mean I have like what a, a couple of FedEx boxes and a, a porta potty still. Uh, yeah. And a godly amount of rope, because <laughs> he ran out of rope, uh, and probably some sort of water filter. Water filter. Hell yeah, dude! Can't this get sick. Guy. Fuck. So check well, it out. What would you bring? Let's see what you're doing. What if I could fit three things in my pocket? One of them would be a knife, mm-hmm. pocket knife, uh, like seeing glasses. All right. Uh, like a pair of reading glasses, and maybe um, let's see what else. Some nylon string. Nylon, okay. Yeah. So the the knife eventually it's gonna go dull unless I figure out how to fucking. Well, you're sharp. bringing a pocket knife though, man. Yeah. You know what you could do with a pocket? Well, you know what you could do with a machete? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bitch. But how long are you gonna be able to? wheeled around that machete I mean, it's a long get, time uh, wow, get out of here. this guy's rambo all over and then you can go sport. go next to a rock and sharpen it i mean it's pretty easy oh, okay my bad. i forgot you lived there a little while right hey i know i did like i lived on a <laughs> beach for like like two weeks dude it was or like a month <laughs> <laughs> so with the nylon string you can use to cut stuff because yeah. i mean the nylon string i mean it's like a saw uh, the eyeglasses you can use as a magnifying glass to start your fire. Um, that shit ain't going to run out unless you break it. Um, so there you go. You got your fire about to go. Well, I guess I'd need to chop down a tree or something to make some sort of stick the way he did to go pick out fish. Not a big fish person, but I guess you so, got to do what you got to do. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, do you think it's there for survival or do you, or I mean, do you pick things for survival or do you think, do you get things to leave? Uh, how do you mean? Like, do you take items like if, if in this exercise, do you pick your items to survive on the Island or do you pick items in order for you to, to, um, to eventually leave the Island? Uh, just for survival. For survival. Pure survival. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you're familiar with it and I just, I, uh, maybe about four, yeah, probably about four or five years ago, um, started like researching different things. And one of the things that I found in, in researching is something called EDC, which is everyday carry. Mm-hmm. So there are people that have everyday carry items on them, like no matter what. And it, it's really cool. Cause like, if you if you look up EDC stuff, you have like small pocket knives. You have like uh, these multi-use pens that you can use for sharpening things. Of course, writing, um, measuring. 
um, backpacks that have all these crazy little pockets for you. And, you know, like small backpacks, mm-hmm. right? I'm not talking about like your school bag, but like stuff that you would keep in the car, you know, yeah. a, uh, a, a device that cuts your seat belt just in case you get into an accident, right? Oh, wow. Um, a, a device that will break your window again if in case you in an accident you can't get out you have to break your window and it like easy tap stuff you know really carry a spark plug with you you know apparently the porcelain on the end of the spark plug breaks windows right nice so you know if, if you're ever in a accident or if you ever witness an accident you need to pull somebody out you you don't want to use your hand to break that damn window yeah you got to have you know a, a nice tool to make it easy for you and you know that's just kind of the things like i always like to try to be prepared yeah am i going to be prepared am i going to spaz out when something happens who right. knows but hey i got this cool bag with some <laughs> shit in it well, okay but where do you keep the bag at you can keep it in your car you but where on the car seat. Under the seat. Under the seat. Okay. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like, it's like, but yeah. I, don't leave it in the, the trunk. <laughs> right. The the seat belt. I actually I have that seat belt cutter. It's a it's a two in one. It's a seat belt cutter, and it has a little window breaking tool. I keep that in the in the middle console uh-huh. of my truck, uh, my truck and my car. And uh, man, for a little while, people at work thought I was crazy because I, I you could buy them on Amazon for like eight of them for like. 20 bucks uh-huh. and i was giving those things away for christmas i was like hey yo put that in your car man yeah i was all about that edc shit when i found out <laughs> i was like dude you gotta be prepared you never know um <laughs> people were like frank man you're, you're a weird dude man we who who does this and fuck that like, i mean like it, 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 you're you're only weird up until the point where you actually need it one day and then you're you're a hero that's right you know so it's like it's like Yes, I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm just saying in the event of whatever yeah. whatever yep. weird events all line <laughs> and you're you're driving and you fall into a river and, and your your seatbelt and your window get stuck, Merry Christmas. There you go. I saved your life. <laughs> I, I like to carry one of those uh like those flint uh keychains uh that you can actually uh, undo and it actually yeah. has flint on it, man. You yeah, never know. Absolutely. Having fire, yep. you know. But. They have, I have, I have one that is. It's a little orange one that you put in your hand, and it's almost like a, um, it's like a thumb, uh, thumb trigger to where you you push down on it with your thumb, and it creates the spark for you. Oh wow! So you don't have to like use the twig and the the scratch to <laughs> yeah. make the damn light. You like just sit there and crank that thing. It's pretty cool. How does the how does the seatbelt thing work? So it's it's a very sharp blade that's tucked inside of two pieces of plastic and you you essentially put it over, you know, I guess your shoulder or the bottom piece, whichever one you can reach, and it cuts right through that seatbelt cuz you can't cut that seatbelt with regular scissors. That shit is strong. It's really? like Yeah, I mean it is like crazy strong, but that that uh it's like a razor blade in there, man. And I mean it will cut through there. It will cut through there. What what other uh, what other uh, items do you have? Maybe not uh, not just for the car though. My I always carry a pocket knife with me. That's just the that's just the Mexican in me, man. You always, <laughs> you always gotta have a pocket. You never know when you're gonna have to cut open a box or something. When, when you gotta practice your judo. <laughs> yep. That's right, man. Uh, always carry a pocket knife with me. Always carry a belt with me. Um, a belt? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. What do you Put mean that like- belt on? Like a waist belt, like a, like hey, this is belt that holds up my pants. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's because pretty... if if you're if you're ever in a fight, man, that makes a great whip. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you just start swinging that motherfucker, man. <laughs> beat you through much, just heading like your I mom, like fucking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker, get the fuck out of me. <laughs> get over here, so I can hit your ass. No, 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 you're not going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh man um yeah so like a pocket knife uh my belt i usually have at least two or three pens um i always always carry around my uh my seeing glasses of course because i can't read my computer without those motherfuckers but um <laughs> you know just little shit like that man um i always carry like about four or five bucks in cash or change inside the car oh nice you know because 
you know, you know, you never know if you got to put air in the tire or something like that. Um, give somebody a tip for doing that for you. Stop by the Jiffy Lube, and bam. <laughs> um, you know, stuff like that. Oh, that's <clears> cool, <throat> man. That's 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 nice, Frank. I'm I'm glad that you're a, a prepper. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, hey, people were making fun of those preppers, man, and then all this uh, COVID shit. Uh, hit. Ryan, it's like I told you. I told you. <laughs> two years of beans, and you're like, oh, yeah, bitch. I'm about to eat. How's it? How's it been for you, man? Like when all this stuff happened, like, uh, man, it was it was pretty freaky. Um, because every you know, there's a lot of uncertainty. People flipping out. Yeah. There was there's nobody like people running through the streets, rubbing shit in their hair, like, oh my god, you know, there was not, none of that. Well, that's but, San Francisco, though. Well, I'm sure <laughs> they're taking shits in the street, dog. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> I haven't seen it, but I heard it. <laughs> uh, that's probably why they got the cases of bubonic plague. That's there, why man. it fucking skyrocketed. <laughs> God, <laughs> taking shit in the street. <laughs> Animals eating that shit. And <laughs> taking a dump somewhere and a squirrel eats it. And then who knows, man. Um, but yeah, no, nah, it was, it's it just crazy. Like we were good on toilet paper. That wasn't a, that wasn't a thing for us. Yeah. Like we, we found it. Okay. We, we still went grocery shopping. People yeah. were flipping out over here. My H E B man, that's by my house. The shelves were empty, man. Right, yeah. like, what the fuck? What is wrong with you people? They told us the grocery stores are going to be open, but they were like doomsday prepping. No and shit, then, man. Probably all this shit that they bought, unless they had a big ass barbecue, most of it probably spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know why they were hoarding all that stuff, man. But you know, to each his own. They, you know, people think I'm crazy for having the stuff that I carry on me. So, but your stuff is practical, though, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, food's practical. You know, they got a big ass freezer. Throw it in there. You know, that's and true. I mean, always that shit later, but. I mean, it just—it it was just—it just weird. Like, uh, no one's been through this. You know what I mean? Like, unless there's people that that, that survived the bird flu <laughs> back in the day. Well, um, you know, everybody says that nobody's been through this, but like, take take just the what's going on right now. Try to remove yourself in the picture of it being a virus that's going right. Mm -hmm. So the people and and I, I think about this from time to time too. Like let's think about people in other countries that are in constant war, yeah. right? They wake up, they go about their business. They don't know if they're gonna make it home. Right. You know, they don't know if they're gonna make it to work. Yeah. Oh, shit. Um. And so like we're kind of living in that right now and in and, and that constant uncertainty and you know people say oh this is the new norm and not not really um it, it is the new norm if you make it the new norm um this is a, a phase and always have phases throughout history you know yeah. when they had um revolutions in france you know they <laughs> overdo the government over there that was a phase yeah Whenever they had the Spanish flu, hell, whenever they had the, um, um, what was that, uh, typhoid Mary, you know, spreading tuberculosis, that, that was hitting people like crazy. But <laughs> once everybody figured it out and they said, all right, let's work together so that we can knock this thing out, it, it got knocked out. It got taken care of. And, you know, I think if everybody started working together better, yes. um, you know, instead of you against me and us versus them, it's like we're human. Everybody's human, right? If we want to survive, we got to be good to each other. And I'm not saying like give everything you got to your neighbor, but hey, man, if you know that your neighbor's struggling, give him a cup of sugar, man. Let him have one of them chicken breasts that you got <laughs> in the fridge. Shit, you know. <clears throat> you just got to be good to people, man, and and it'll be good to you. Yeah, I mean, I can I can definitely see that, and you're you're mostly right on that. I mean, you are right. I mean, like other countries have it way worse besides the fucking you know a virus. Yeah, as far as like having having to dodge you know people and bullets at the same time. Uh, but I, I think here you know we are a little soft, <laughs> you know, as far as not not having to worry about war and all you know uh, and all that those other scenarios too. Um, 
I just, it, 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 the most important thing was you said that we have to work together, and that's definitely something we're not doing right now. Um, just, just amidst like everything that's going on. All, I mean, all the like, like all the division, you know. And then on top of that, you know, uh, you know, uh, a, pan- a, a pandemic, you know. Oh uh, man. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah it's so it, it's just it's just weird and, and, and it's definitely interesting times that we live in um this is i and you're right i, I do believe this is it, this is the temporary temporary norm and shit's gonna get back 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 together soon it's just really really weird to to at the beginning now everything the especially like in texas everything's kind of going back to the norm um, well and 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 you everybody talks about the norm right <clears throat> they're unless you live in a bubble and unless you never go out, there's really not a normal. There's always an evolution of things. Yeah. Um, even, even with yourself, right? You, yeah, they, they stop making a certain pair of underwear. Hey man, you got to adapt. You got to figure that stuff out. Cause if not, man, you're just going to wear the same underwear for the rest of your life. It's going to have holes. You might have a little extra breeze when you fart, but (laughs) <laughs> Those things are gonna run out, man. Yeah, and, and we all just constantly have to learn how to adapt, and and I think this is like, you know, I, I hate that this happened, but at the same time, I'm ready for for the new. I'm ready to see how we evolve from mm-hmm. this. Um, and what, what does that look like to you? <clears throat> hopefully, you know, and, and I'm a hopeful person. I'm an optimist. Uh, I, I want to see more neighbor night out people people really getting back to the roots of being human into where we socialize more we we know what our neighbors names are right yeah we know you know hey hey the lady down the road man she's she's in her 80s and you know she lives by herself let me knock on her door and see if she needs me to run to the store for her real quick or Hell, you know, I'm I'm going to Whataburger right now. Let me let me text her right quick and see if she wants some fries or a number one with bacon <laughs> or something. You know, I mean, it, it just stuff like that 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 I hope that happens. The other thing that we're seeing too is like the 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 push for new technologies. Like I was I was very excited to see what technology was going to bring to us through all this because man there's some super duper smart people out there that think, you know, way and and I hate the phrase but way outside the box, right? Yeah. There is no box. They're out there bending spoons, right? Coming coming up with these creative solutions to problems we didn't even know we had. Yeah. You know, um and and I hope that, you know, we're able to just leap off of this plateau that we've been living on for a while to where everything is done for us. Everything is handed to us. We have to work a little harder right now through the pandemic to, you know, know what we're going to make for dinner because you can't eat out all the damn time. Right. Right. Um, you, you gotta, people are back in the garage making shit out of wood, you know? I mean, it, it's just, it's, it's amazing what this is pushing people to discover about themselves. I love that. So much new content on YouTube also of like, hey, I, I'm making a YouTube channel about how to cook in my Instapot. Oh, shit. <laughs> Let me watch that. You know, I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I love watching YouTube, man. Um, it, it, it's great just seeing those people. I, I I follow a lot of people that do woodworking, um, you know, YouTube channels and stuff. I I love watching shit. There's even a YouTube channel that I recently found that it's this dude that all he does is he goes to like garage sales or thrift stores or um like really old stores and he finds these antique tools and they're rusted to shit. And he just plays music, and he goes through his process of cleaning them up, sharpening them. He restores restoring them. Restoring them. Yeah. Nice. And it's beautiful, man, because, you know, <clears throat> under all that rust and under all that shit, they're still a useful tool, man. And and that's an analogy for humans, right? Even if you're broken and busted, you know, figure out how to, how to clean that part of you up, sharpen your tools 
And you can be incredibly resourceful, not only to yourself, but others. Um, and, and it's just so crazy. Um, well, it was like, it was like, well, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. What no, no, that was the same. Like that, that goes back to what we're, what we were saying at the beginning, as far as automatically reaching out for help because we're so spoiled and so conditioned to know yeah. that we can get the answer. It's like, now we're backed into a corner to where we have to actually do something for ourselves. Uh, yep. and, you know, so, I mean, that, that's, it's, it's crazy. Like that's a good YouTube video that like a, a good analogy. I, I like the one too, where he restored, there's another one, a guy restore buys like broken, uh, game boys and restores them back. Oh, in, yeah. Wow. Dude, uh, Matt, he buys like $2 game boys and it fixes them up. It's pretty cool. Uh, What's but, the craziest thing that you've seen on YouTube? Give me my waffle fries. Uh, <laughs> waffle fries. <laughs> But you didn't tell me how no brothers. <laughs> yeah, nutted. <laughs> uh, there, I, I don't know what it was called, uh, but oh, well, two things, two things that I, I two videos that I do remember. Uh, the first one being like one of the first, the, the actual first video I ever saw on YouTube. Uh, it was called like Zero Hour, and it was like suppose supposedly uh, use uh, air quotes there. Uh, like the the surveillance video for Columbine, oh, and shit. but it wasn't like it, it was just oh. I don't know if it was like just recreated or whatever. Uh, but the sec- the weirdest thing I've seen was this guy had this this bowl like a fish bowl and he was like growing th- growing things like uh, like amoebas or so I don't know what it was exactly, but it turned into things like moving. Ooh. Like, yeah, I had to find it again. I'll actually send it to you. But it was really weird because, of course, it's like the rabbit hole, uh, like 3 a.m. Oh and I'm God, like, oh, yeah. shit. Like, I love that, though, <laughs> man. Oh, my God. I found so, so many incredible just weird things on YouTube. And what I was going to say is, like, uh, one of the things that I'm, I'm – discovering now and it's it maybe it's been a thing for a while but something called asmr yeah um i don't uh, you know what that is hello frank nice to meet you yeah go and listen to what i'm saying (laughs) oh yeah and there's even there's even the the (laughs) listen listen to my beard hair (laughs) you're you're such a pervert dude Uh, (laughs) oh (laughs) <laughs> but uh like through all this because we're so separated right now um I, i'm guess I, maybe i'm just seeing more and more videos of it but there's these asmr videos where it's this dude there's no music or anything like that he's just like cleaning boots you know and then like there's a bunch of youtube channels on people going to the chiropractor to hear the, you know, you're listening to people getting their back popped and their shoulder worked on and shit like that. And I'm just like, I find myself like, man, I miss that contact with other people, right? Yeah. I want to go get my boots shined. I don't even have boots. <laughs> like, yo, man, I, I just want to hear that and, and, and see somebody work like that. And then, <laughs> you know, going to the chiropractor, it's like, man, that would be badass. You just hear, you just popped. hear like, my back! Yeah. <laughs> this, Mama, what you do? Don't forget to like and subscribe <laughs> at the end yeah. of the video. Yeah, it really is. And dude, so I've watched so many of the chiropractors ones. Like I think YouTube is just feeding me them, and then it's taken this weird turn to where it's like a lot of Russian videos that are <laughs> not questionable. Um, and so it, it's just crazy. But uh, one of my all-time favorite things to listen to on YouTube or watch even is um, this one dude. <clears throat> Excuse me. His name's Alan Watts. I don't know if you've ever yeah. listened to his ch- Oh, my God, man. Like, I could just sit there and, like, listen to his his talks. And I love it when they put, like, real chill um, music in the background and you're listening to it. It's phenomenal stuff, man. I love it. It's, like, mellow makes you mindful, uh, really makes you think about all the realities of, and possibilities of things, man. It's so crazy. That is crazy. And, you know, one thing that I, I, I am looking forward to listening to, Frank, 
is your podcast coming up? And as we wind down here, do you know what your podcast is going to be about yet? Um, so what I'd really like it to be is just like, uh, it, it's me and a buddy of mine, his name is Shane. So we're going to be talking about, you know, stuff that's going on, uh, music, news, movies. Uh, you know, one of the, <laughs> one of the things this dude likes to talk about is like, are yoga pants good for you or bad for you? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, are you talking about like circulation? Or like I'm thinking like you know biophysical stuff like is it like is it cutting off people's circulation? He's like no dummy. Does you think people look good in them? I'm like oh wow, well, I guess. <laughs> Looking at people in yoga pants. That, that's true. That's a good. That's that's a good point. I guess. <laughs> Ugh, uh, it's questionable. You know. Uh, right. so, I mean, but hey, you know what? To each their own. If you feel you know, if you feel you can work it, work it. You know. Uh, uh, just wash them and make sure they don't smell like kitty litter. You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> thought, thought, thought I forgot. <laughs> thought I forgot. I didn't. Oh my God, man. I just okay. That's so crazy. so kitty, oh kitty litter. God. I'm just gonna tell a quick story. I'm gonna tell two quick stories before we end here, guys. Uh, one was the quickest one uh, was that there was a lady that we worked with who was a liaison between our company and different company, uh, like potential companies for us to work for. I don't know how. I do, which is, job. yeah, I don't, I don't think it lasted. Um, so she was a heavy smoker um, and act, and uh, a heavy person. <laughs> yeah, uh, she had the hots for, for your boy over there, Tank. Uh, yeah, she, right. She wanted some Tank. Ew, Ooh. no. Yeah. <laughs> 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 But, uh, but so, and she, she, she was sweat profusely and it was just like this combination of the sick, the cigarettes, like clinching onto every fiber of her body enclosed mixed with the sweat beads, um, that were just so just, you can hear them drop on the floor every time she took a step. Um, and it just made, it created this smell. Um, that me and Frank could only define as kitty litter, used kitty litter at that. Yeah. Uh, so it was like old belly button lint mixed with like oh man cigarettes that have been burned into the filter with like and, a touch of perfume to and, mask and the smell. She would not have to be close to you at oh, all. No. I mean, you could smell her, this, this this person. And and again, look, I, I I'm a fat guy, you know. I, I, I'm not saying like there's anything. I mean, well, there's a lot being wrong with fat. I'm just gonna say that I don't care if it's fat shaming or not, because I'm fat and I know I shouldn't be fat. Anyway, I digress on that. But it was just a, a very unhealthy. If you're fat and unclean, that's just, one that, thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a it, it's a whole different ball game. Uh, but yeah, no. So we we just uh, referenced kitty litter to uh, uh <laughs> we just oh. <laughs> to that stench. That's so nasty. And, 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 I could still oh. smell it. I'm, yeah, uh, I I can like, still ugh. smell it. It's like I like. Can, uh, uh, <laughs> and that was that was back when I used to smoke too. Mm-hmm. Like I used to go down there to the parking lot during our breaks, and we would have a cigarette, and she would be out there, but she would be out in the sun, sweating it up a little bit more yeah. than the rest of us. I, and I don't think she wore deodorant. I don't. I don't know if she bathed. If yeah. she did, I don't know if she did it right. They should have <sighs> classes on that shit. Yeah, this is how you so. wash your ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you bathe. This is how you bathe. This is how you bathe. Anyway, next story. Oh my god. Um, me and Frank are eating at Chick Fil A. Oh! Oh, it is time, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for the banger of the story. Uh, uh, mind you, uh, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I guess I'll go into context after the story. But uh, me and Frank are eating at Chick Fil A, and hey, actually, you know what, Frank? Do you want to tell the story? You, you told no, it really well. I- I don't want to tell. I want to hear the story through your eyes because okay. the way I tell it was what happened to me, and I don't know if <laughs> if you want me to, I can tell it. I'll tell. I'll I'll, I'll say it. I'll just say it. Uh, so <laughs> we are eating at Chick Fil A, and uh, you know we're sitting next so to we've a window. Known each other for maybe a year or two at yeah. this point. No, it 
it's been quite some time, I would what say. Yeah. Okay, I would say a year. You know, a year or two. Yeah. You know, maybe going on two years. Um, so then um, we're eating by a window. And we're just, you know, having a good conversation. You know, enjoying our chicken sandwiches. <laughs> and uh, Frank looks over out the window and sees a Jeep pull into the parking lot. And uh, and mind you, he was he it was a correct a correct description like a very <laughs> very correct description of what was about to happen right now, and uh, my friend goes, "Hey man, look at those." Okay, well let me just say this. Let me back it up. Two individuals get out of the jeep, you know, um, very very. One was a skinny looking dude, you know, yeah. lengthy, um, and kind of a part in his hair had the B- Buddy Holly glasses. Um, you know, the skinny jeans and um, just looked very, very, you know, screech powers, you know. Yeah. You know, and uh, the same thing with the, the female individual. But, you know, she, she looked good. <laughs> uh, um, but Frank looks over and goes, hey, man, look at those two nerds over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, but, but he said it like, hey, man, he goes. Your description, man, it, they were like extra nerd like uh, oh man square glasses i mean mind you i've been i i've been no okay well i'll just say this uh i'll finish the story first because <laughs> look, at, look at those two nerds over there like very very proud like frank was proud like <laughs> like like if he just went on a pokemon adventure and found the two rarest nerds of all oh time and he was about to catch them all and uh, <laughs> and i go those and I point over them. Those two nerds. He goes, "Yeah." I go, "Oh, yeah, man." And I, I was like, "Man, they're extra nerdy." Look man, at like, that. Like, oh, they're extra nerdy today. And uh, so I, I proceed to uh, get out of my chair, right? And I walk to you, said nerds, and I put my arms around them. <laughs> yeah, man. This dude here. What's up? He's out like, of the one. <laughs> oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Oh, he, you're all like, hey, shaking their hands, hugging them and stuff. And you're like, hey, man, how you doing? I forgot what their names were. Uh, you turn over to me and they're like, hey, this is my friend Frank. Uh, <laughs> I've known these guys since I was like 10. Oh, I didn't I know him like, that long. <laughs> oh, my God. I just like sank in my chair. I was like, oh, no. oh man. I had the biggest crush on that girl, too. I had been to their houses and uh, their house. Well, her house, and then when they moved in with each other, I've been to their house. And um, complete nerds. I'm talking like sa- Sailor Moon dolls all over their walls. You know, uh, what is that other one? Uh, they have those, I don't know. They're like this different anime dolls and toys and collectibles everywhere. Like it was a nerd fest. So you were correct. I just happened to know them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But it's like out of no. like out of the 1.4 million people in San Antonio, uh, like you had to pick those two nerds. <laughs> yeah, those two specific nerds. Jeez. Yeah, that was a great day. And that's a story that lives on in infamy, and that I tell, and you still continue to tell. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> but Frank, man, uh, how I was it was it was this your first podcast? Absolutely. I've never done anything like this before. Um, and like I told you, man, I listened like when you told me about the, the one that you had um, or this this podcast here, I started listening to it, man. You're having so much fun talking to yeah, people. Dude. And I was like, man, let me let me uh, let me jump on the train and see if I can do this, too. man. Oh, you and definitely can. Yeah, man. Great, great, great inspiration to get me started, man. Yeah. How was it? How was your first podcast? Uh, it, it's interesting, man. It's just like it, the time runs by so quick. I right. Look at the timer just now. I'm like, yeah. What, what? Yeah, exactly, man. Like you, you don't so really, you don't realize it. Like it, it, as long as you're having fun, like there's, there's, there's been some guests where I'm like having to drag it out and like try to pull something from them. Um, n- no fault of their own. They, you know, they want to be on it. I get it. You know, uh, it's just not everyone can hold on a conversation without knowing what they're, what they're going to talk about. Um, but I think you're you're definitely in that position that you can fake it till you make it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and I don't think there's going to be a lot of faking though. I mean, I think you have uh, you have a lot of knowledge. I think you're going to do great. And I, I mean, when it comes out, man, I'm, I'm definitely definitely posted on 
uh, you know, I'll give a shout out here on the podcast and on on my social social media platforms. Show 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 social media platforms. But <laughs> but all right, hey man, thanks for talking to me. It's been good. And, yeah, dude, uh, thank you, thank you so much and, for having me. Yeah, dude, absolutely. And when uh, you and uh, what's your friend's name again? Shane. Shane. There you go. Shout out Shane. Whenever you and Shane get started, uh, you know, y'all want to come, come, y'all both of y'all want to come on the podcast. Y'all are more than welcome to, man. Yeah, dude, that'd be awesome. Same thing for you, man. When, once we get this thing, once we get some legs on this thing, man, we'll uh, we'll have to hook up and put both of our shows together for a minute. Hell yeah, more than trucker. But all right, man. Thanks again for being on. Thanks again for listening, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll definitely see you on the next one. Bye.